welcome back. Today is a nice sunny day. There's no wind and it's not raining for a change so spring is here. But unfortunately we've got this bloody virus roaming around the countryside causing chaos, causing people to buy too many fucking toilet rolls and just being behaving like idiots. No need to uh, run around and panic. Food supplies will still get through. All is cushy, all is well, well, apart from the virus. Right, enough of that nonsense. Today on the bench we have an 807 push-pull amplifier, uh, two 807s in parallel, two per side as it were. This is a quick introductory video I'm um, just discussing a few points about design. In future videos, hopefully, I'll uh, go into more detail about how you go about designing a valve or tube amplifier. And this one, we just it's a quick go through. Um, yes, there are a few mistakes coming up, but try as I might, I can't master the bloody software and I can't figure out how to put titles in the bloody video. I tried yesterday, took me hours, didn't get anywhere. So, at some point later on in the video, there's some uh, resistors underneath here on this potentiometer, and I see the one ohm, they're not one ohm, they are te uh, one meg, one meg ohm. And there's a few other little uh, clangs as well. But hopefully, by the time this comes out and between this one and the next one I'll have sorted out how to put titles in using shortcut. Right, enough of me rabbiting on, Jesus Christ, it's already two minutes long. Please, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Oh, and by the way, if you do get a chance and you like it and all the rest of it, can you give it a thumbs up or subscribe or something? It just um, helps me sort of get a handle on whether you think the videos are good. A pile of shite or whatever so a bit of feedback from you will be appreciated because then if you do think they're a pile of shite then I will try to make them a bit more interesting and not waffle on so much like I'm doing now <sighs> deep breath right enjoy the video as you can see everything at the moment is just knocked up so we're in the prototype stage so how do you go about designing a valve amplifier? Well this is my way and it's not necessarily the correct way. My approach is to do a few calculations, well as, as few calculations as, pro as possible and wing it really and uh, build it and then fix any problems that present themselves. So where did I start? Well in this case I started with the output transformers and that's how I started on the other amplifiers. I bought a, not these, on the other um, um, valve amplifiers that I built, I bought a output transformer off eBay and started from there. So I got given these really nice output transformers with an 8 ohm load, they have a roughly 3 0.4k primary so that's the, I think they were originally designed for 4EL34s but uh, I've already done an EL34 amp and I've had these 807s knocking about for ages so I decided to use those so there we go straight away there's a design consideration that isn't particularly correct I've just chosen the output valves because they look nice, not because of their technical specifications. Um, but all in all, an output valve is an output valve. It just uh, it's capable of high current at a high voltage, and that's all there is to it, really. And the output transformer and the other circuitry has more of an impact on frequency response and harmonic distortion and things of that nature than the actual valves themselves and the make it doesn't matter what bloody make they are really to a point as far as I know that there is one proviso there 
those that were made in the past from what I've read are better able to handle a higher HD or B plus. Uh, apparently some of the new Soviet or Chinese made valves or whatever can't handle as high a, um, as higher HD or B plus. So when designing a, a, a valve amplifier I've just started with the output transformer and the output transformer dictates pretty much the rest of the amp. Another approach would, to, would be to say well how much power do I want? What um, The frequency response, obviously you want a good frequency response class A, class AB, class A2 or whatever but all those considerations are basically going to dictate the final sound because um, obviously a an A a class A valve is going to add less distortion and a different sound to a push pull amplifier. So in this case, let's just deal with this case rather than valve amplifiers in general. So in this case, we knew I knew that we've got a output transformer with a 3K4 primary if that has an 8 ohm load. So I basically sat down and draw some and drew some load lines for the 807. I will go into load line drawing in another video. This is just a quick sketch, uh, a quick look at some of the considerations and uh, decisions. So with that in mind, I worked out that we needed a HD or B plus of about 420 volts to get 50 watts. Uh, again, I just winged it really, I guessed. Um, just did a pretty straightforward Ohm's Law calculation to get that. And then I wound this toroid transformer by hand. It was um, a transformer that was that had a it was a toroidal transformer that had something like 250 volt secondaries. Took those off and then rewound it to have a higher voltage and with a few uh, windings for the heaters. And there's also a winding for a negative bias supply. So like I say at the moment I'm winging it. I've just wired it up just to see what we get. And it's pretty simple. I've just basically used the same circuit more or less as the last amp I used because it worked. I can change any of this at any point. So this is, as I say, connected in auto linear configuration, about 43% taps. So here on the grid twos, we've got a 220 ohm grid stopper on all of the valves and then on the grid one we've got a 2k2 grid stopper most amplifiers that I've seen seem to have this 10 to 1 relationship between grid stoppers uh, something like 1k and 100r for instance so these these values I've just plucked off the top of my head we've got 10 ohm sense resistors in the cathode and they're going straight to ground and then we've got a bit of a jiggery, bit of jiggery pokery going off here, in that we've got some balancing pots here. And all they are doing is allowing us to balance the output stage for better distortion. And all that's doing is taking the minus 100 volts bias and what's the word and and putting it on the on grid ones and that's allowing us to null that in as it were so the output stage as you can see is just knocked up on a bit of old uh, board, I don't know what sort of board it is, some sort of compact boardy stuff easier to obviously fabricate, don't have to drill metal a few bits of wood just knocked in so that we can sort of stand it up 
and away we go. You can see underneath it's all very slapdash and banged together. We can try and get in there and show you some detail. These big bits of bus wire here, that is for one of our grids, uh, for a grid two. And this is uh, of a grid two. No, no, sorry, that's grid one. This is grid two here. We've got the same sort of arrangement for grid one with capacitors that all go from our next stage a long tail pair. There are 10 ohm sense resistors. Uh, the only problem with sort of knocking it together like this is if you're not careful you can end up with bad connections so you have to watch out for that. Obviously if it moves then solder joints can break. And then here are the pots I was talking about. It looks complicated but it isn't. All these Turn, uh, one ohm resistors are here across these uh, across the wipers and the various connections on the pot are there for is in case the wiper lifts off the pot because we do not want no bias going to the grid ones of the valves if that happens obviously they're going to conduct heavily and go into overcurrent situation so if the wiper lifts these Resistors make sure there's always a negative voltage potential on the grid. And basically this is a ganged pot paralleled so that if we turn this this way it'll send more voltage, bias voltage to this one. Turn it this way it will send more bias voltage to this side. And then this pot here is just dictating how much negative bias voltage there is. At the moment I've got it set very low to minus 42 volts. Which is lower than it will actually be on the actual amplifier. And that's basically because I'm just doing a few uh, DC tests. I'm just making... I only wired this up yesterday and I'm making sure that DC is where it should be. I've got the correct heater voltages and all the rest of it. Uh, one word about the heater situation. The heaters are wired in series. So all together I think, where are we? Four sixes. Four sixes. Twenty-four. So altogether there's about 25 volts with the heaters connected in series. They're just easier to wire that way. Although really, then that's not a brilliant idea from hum, hum cancellation from a hum cancellation point of view. But like I say, this is just a quickly knock together stage just to get an idea of what's what. At the moment I've grounded the connections to the coupling capacitors because that was causing the amplifier to go into oscillation. So that's about all there is to say at the moment. I'll go into more detail drawing load lines and all that malarkey in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ta-da!